If someone brags about their success or happiness, assume it's half what they claim. If someone downplays their success or happiness, assume it's double what they claim. The map is not the terrain. A hundred percent. And there's obviously exceptions to the rule, but I think that's quite a consistent rule that I see. When I hear someone, particularly if it's money or if it's, it's things like that, when they're bragging overtly, I'm like, ah probably don't really believe this but if someone's kind of playing it down and there's a few subtle tells it's the classic midwit meme right you've got the probably my favorite meme of all time which is the low iq guy on the left the kind of midwit in the middle and the super high iq guy there where the low iq guy says i'm the guy on the left the guy in the middle says i'm the guy on the right and the guy on the right says i'm the guy on the left so <laughs> and you see this with wealth as well where you see the super rich try and hide the welfare is it's the kind of people who are fl- like the money Twitter crowd that are trying money. to screenshot their Shopify store and things like that, where it's, why are you trying to signal that? When you're trying to overtly signal, you're probably trying to compensate for something. Again, there's exceptions to the rule, mm. but when someone's signaling so hard, it's probably a sign that they don't have we it. Were in, we were in uh, a location in Austin over the weekend and a, a gentleman came up to us and one of the first sentences out of his mouth was 1500 people in the world have started a one billion dollar business i'm one of them <laughs> like now I, I believe you even less now anyone who's seen carl pilkington's bullshit man <laughs> you wanted to go <laughs> bullshit yeah yeah i um i think what it kind of suggests when somebody does steam in and um start with achievements first is or, or, any kind of bragging basically suggests to us it's a low status, very easy to fake signal of authenticity, right? Like a hard uh, signal of authenticity would just be show me your bank balance or show me your capacity. Someone telling you how smart they are is way less reliable of a signal than someone having a conversation with you that flows perfectly and you yes. think, holy fuck, like that's really cool. So yeah, I, I, you know, we're into personality quirks here around people's desire to be seen and their needs for validation from the world around them. But I think generally the bragging razor of thinking, if I want to come across well, allowing my achievements to arise as a byproduct of someone asking me about what I do. This is another thing that happens in, in Austin that I had to introduce you to, which is since I've been here, when you join a new group, at a party or a gathering or whatever, and you get introduced by the one person that you probably do know in that circle, they usually tell the group what you do. And that allows everyone to bypass the bragging razor because your friend bigs up your best mm. achievements. But again, it's a reliable adjudicator, presumably. I'm not going to lie about what you know, he's got a 17 inch penis, and I'm pretty sure that he's got the world high jump record, and he's like the first man on the moon like i'm not going to say that right i'm going to say the things reliably that that people can can assume so next one i love this one instagram razor when you see a photo of an influencer looking attractive on instagram assume that there were 99 worse variations of that photo you haven't seen they just picked the best one 100 percent. and me and josh uh my business partner when we travel around we'll be in sometimes very nice restaurants and we see the beautiful couple kind of, like i don't think it's them necessarily but the kind of tommy fury molly may l- looking couple not referring to them and he's just kind of there staring into the distance and she'll be there just going through her phone of like infinite photos of her and then I, on visco I, trying to biggest, find the right filter one of the biggest red pills i had recently was where i was at a bar and then i looked over and there's a girl on a photo of herself and she was face tuning it live in real time and i, I now realized you it's the classic where's the sausage made? And you've you got to realize that everything on Instagram that you see is absolute. It's just, it's, it's just not true. It's the metaverse. It really is the metaverse. Everyone's an emoji character, completely edited. It's, it's bizarre. I love the fact that you have to assume as well that this is the best option out of what everybody had. And especially if it's someone that's got a pretty well curated Instagram feed. But I suppose that's one of the advantages of, as you get to a particular level with creating content online, 
you don't even know what's going out. It's, you know, the spin、mm. the wheel thing. I、yeah. have no idea what video goes out each day. Like the shorts team finds things that they love. And sometimes they'll be like, oh, this bit with Mark Norman was really fun. Like you should maybe put that out. But they treat me like a child. Like they've got a strategy and they know what they're doing. So I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll just like、uh, fucking close your eyes and put your hand in the celebrations tin and pull out, oh, today it's a bounty, tomorrow it's a Malteser. A good, a good razor as well, kind of related to this, is both these razors are trying to. Avoid signals and then try and actually study the noise. Oh, so oh, like not not the noise, sorry, but the actual thing. So, meta games I think are super important because you can learn a lot. So I have this rule, which is if I want to work with a personal trainer, I want the personal trainer to be in insane shape, and that's way better than any marketing spiel he can give for me. If I see a SaaS product which is selling landing page software. I want when I click on their landing page for that software to be incredible. I like the landing page should look. If you're if you're the landing page software guy and your landing page isn't great, that's a sign. One of my favorite, one of my heroes throughout history in marketing space is David Ogilvy, and David Ogilvy. I forgot which magazine it was. They wrote a headline which is "Is David Ogilvy a genius?" Question mark. And Ogilvy was a great marketer because the way he marketed himself, he replied to that headline. By getting his lawyer to sue them for the question mark, or at least that's the story that he released.、And、I go even within that, you can see how good he is at marketing. He doesn't have to say like what he's done there is genius. So whenever you can study these meta games, which is not what people say, what they do, or how they carry themselves, is super super important.、Mm, narcissism, important. narcissism, razor. If you're worried about people's opinions, remember they are too busy worrying about other people's opinions of them. Ninety nine percent of the time, you're an extra in someone else's movie. Yeah. And then that's when you realize everybody else has a, a separate video game that they're playing, and you're just—they're too busy. When you're thinking about them and you're worried about them, assume the amount of thought you give to other people, they're giving to you, and then you realize how delusional that is. One of my friends was chatting about envy recently, and he was talking about how he wants to get rid of envy as a thing. And one thing that's useful with envy is to realize that there's somebody out there who's. So envious of you, who probably checks your Instagram, checks all these things, and constantly is thinking about you. And when you view it through that frame, you go, "Jesus, that's really bad. I'm actually not that worthwhile being envious of." And you realize, "Oh shit, everybody else thinks the way I think," and that then enables you to go to like third person shooter and begin to zoom out and just see, "Oh, I'm not that important." No, there's that quote of、um, "We would care far less about what other people thought of us if we realized how rarely they did." Um, there's this other one. Did you see that story about Churchill that I posted of the young guy who was showing around the Houses of Parliament?、No. This was good. So a young MP was being shown around Parliament by Winston Churchill as he wandered through the halls and offices. He asked questions about how the building was put together. Churchill obliged and gave the young man advice on how this world worked. Upon entering the House of Commons chamber, Churchill's new friends started referring to the MPs on the other benches as the enemy. Churchill reportedly said, "That's the opposition, dear boy." The enemies behind you,、yeah. and what I loved about that was it became obviously what he's talking about is the fact that like the people who you need to be concerned about are the ones that are on your team because you have something that they want. That's the opposition. You know that they're out to get you. It's the people behind you that are the snakes that will stab you in the back. But figuratively or symbolically, I think that I loved that story because it reminds us that we are our own worst enemy most of the time. That we see the world as being some sort of Um, adversary that is trying to do things against us. The world gives zero fucks about you.、Yeah. The world doesn't care less. Literally, the entire universe is indifference to all of our existence. Right? No, not a blind blink. And I imagine that this is one of the reasons why, when we get to look at the night sky, it fills us with a degree of dread and awe and insignificance that I think is very important to keep our ego small because we realize that everything's just going to keep on turning. But also. This goes back to the cynicism, skepticism thing. You can personify the world as being a thing. You know, you hear people say stuff like this, like you know, the world is an evil and mean place, and it will try and break you down. I've even nodded as Goggins said something similar on the podcast, and I, I, there are degrees to how it can be useful to see. Um, to be、um, alert to threats out there, and to have resilience ready for things that are difficult to occur in the world. But the world's fucking indifferent to you. The world doesn't care, and personifying it and creating a an enemy out of the world, I think, is pointing the finger in the wrong direction. It's like it needs to be turned inward. 
you are the person that knows all of your weaknesses. You can say the most disgusting, terrible things to yourself. You know all of the trigger points that you should go through. You chastise yourself for falling short, even though you've tried your hardest. Like, you are your own worst enemy. There will never be anybody that can be as brutal to you as you can to yourself. Realizing that helps you to ameliorate this adversarial view of the world. The world is just a tool. Yeah. It doesn't care about you. There are some people out there who genuinely have enemies, right? But it's a rarefied strata of people, and they've done Tind- something. Tinder swindler. Tinder yeah, swindler, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think, so there's the nihilistic version of that, or it could be framed as nihilistic pessimistic, which is, well, nobody cares about you, and therefore it's like, well, what's the fucking point then? But it goes back to the root opening of the conversation, which is ideas are probably more important than people. Like, the concept of electricity is so important or the, the idea of critical thinking or whatever it is. This is why ideas are so much more important. And you can find as a atheist or an agnostic, you can find God to some extent in these ideas of something that's way bigger than you that can last way longer than you. That is so, so damn important. There was a one that I came up with. This is my, my first one. I'm adding it into the mix, which you'll have seen before. Schultz's razor. Do not attribute to group group conspiracy that which can be explained by cancellation anxiety. So that that's a fucking great one. There's there's the Cummings razor as well, which kind of forks on the idea, which is Balaji, one of my favorite followers on Twitter, tweeted out, "Why don't ev- why doesn't every government in the world have a dashboard so you can see how well they're doing?" It is like think of the core metrics, and you could debate over the core metrics. You can even debate how you measure them, and maybe have different parties. And things like that. But all the core measurements, number of homeless people on the street, obesity rates, death rate. Why why don't we have a BBC Five channel where you can just tune in like a CEO checking their dashboard? And we don't operate that way. Um, and Dominic Cummings, Boris's former right-hand man, retweeted that and said, and I call this Cummings, Cummings razor, which is whenever you get confused by politicians or you think it's some great conspiracy theory, it's basically this, which is Cummings wrote, I can confirm at the time, Boris does not have a dashboard that he checks every day. It's not run by it like a CEO. He just reacts to newspaper stories that come in each day. If everybody saw this, they'd sell everything and flee. And that's a fundamental problem is, yeah, there's not actually a lot of malice that's going on. It's just a complete lack of strategy, design, everything. Every single morning for over three years now, I've started my day the exact same way, which is with Element in water. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, and it is the best hydration drink that I've ever found. It tastes fantastic. It's super refreshing. Orange is just the most OP flavor in the world. It's absolutely phenomenal, and it helps to play a critical role in reducing muscle cramps and fatigue. It regulates your appetite. It optimizes brain health, and it helps curb cravings. They're also the exclusive hydration partner to Team USA weightlifting and relied on by tons of Olympic athletes and everyday high performers all around the world. Also, there is a no BS, no questions asked refund policy where you can buy a box completely risk-free and if you do not like it for any reason, they will give you a refund during an unlimited duration and you don't even need to return the box. That's how confident they are that you'll love it. Element are giving away a free sample pack of all eight flavors with your first box if you go to the link in the description box below or drinklmnt.com slash mw. That's drinklmnt.com slash mw. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe.